Hello everyone, my name is Miller and welcome to the 2.15 update video. And this one is packed with loads of information. I will be covering all the cars, their purposes, explain the lock-ins for the next parts of the American road trip and best of all show what they are capable of with actual runs in HD. And yes, we got a new fastest car in the game. If you want a short partial summary, head over to the Tumblr notes which can be found down below, but those are not complete. Before I start a small note on the Phoenix Evo Cup, the final time seems to be a 10.2 something, which is faster than the max dyno time of the car. I have contacted Natural Motion on this matter, I hope this was not intentional and gets altered soon, because the Heritage Edition is crucial to get, and you'll see later why. A second remark is a thank you to Asho for providing me the cars on my banned droid account, making this video possible. The question with so many cars is where to start, because there are 17 of them. And I guess I will start with the season price cars and the prestige cars. Update 2.15 has 3 seasons worth of season cars and one prestige car which is new. And the order is pretty much already known. The only new prestige car is the AC Schnitzer Z4. Not really a new new car, but still a pretty sweet tier 3 edition. And it shares stage 6 parts with its little brother. There's a total of 7 specs up for grabs and as for how quick this car is, I expected it to be as crazy of a shift pattern as the Z4 M40i, but it doesn't. The pattern is slower and the car is a bit faster, dipping in the 7.7s, becoming the second fastest tier 3 car if we don't count elite custom cars. So it's only beaten by the Varus Type R. The AC Schnitzel Z4, or the ACS4, will be the prestige car of the next season, season 110, which will have the Porsche 911 Turbo S as a season price car. But not the one we already have in the game, it's the new 2021 992 model. The first of many probably with a sweet long backlight. The spec left out for the top 10 will be this Gentian blue version, with us milestone players getting our hands on the one with the guard's red colour. As for how fast it is, it's not stellar, but it fits nicely in where it should be, respectively to the other Porsches in the game. The Dyna strands on the 7.943, and this is my best attempt at running it. This can of course always be improved. The season price car for season 111 is definitely one of my favorites for this update, being the Lamborghini Murcielago Super Veloce with the Liberty Walk body kit. How awesome is this? I've been wanting the Murcielago with the Liberty Walk body kit for such a long time, and on top of it, it's even the Super Veloce edition. The season price version looks amazing with the Bianco Easies and the pink accents on it, but the milestone spec, which will be for the majority of us, looks also pretty dope with the blue Cepheus paint job and with the livery all over it. Good news as well here is that it shares stage 6 parts with the other Murcielago SV we already have in the game. Performance wise it is slower than a Turbo S, but in my opinion for such a car it's the looks that matter. Dino is set at an 8.140 with my best runs beating that time, but it's again a needle drop car. I'm getting really tired of these. Again, there is of course room for improvement. The last season price car in this update is a Mercedes-Benz AMG GT Black Series, a car which has gotten some mixed reviews, but it's a beast of a machine. And finally we have another tier 5 Merc in the game, and I hope the next one will be the Project 1. This high-tech silver edition is left out for the top 10 crews who decide to run for season 112, with then the Obsidian Black version being for the crews which hit 20 million crew RP in that season. The best bit of this car is a spoiler with the second moving part, it's so cool. This is the fastest of the 3 season price cars, with a milestone car dyno hitting a 7.801. On the runs however, we have again a needle drop. This is now 2 out of 4 cars. I think for today I will be keeping count, because it's getting out of hand. It still beats the dyno despite the needle drop, but not by much. That is it for the season price cars. 
for the corresponding seasons, the prestige cars will be the Porsche 718 Boxster Spider, the T3 Spider for season 111, and the Infinity Project Black S for the Merc season on season 112. For the event cars, and this is where it gets interesting, let's start with the non-American road trip related cars, because I want to keep the NASCAR, which is the fastest car, for last. The event cars, remember the hypercar festival with the Lamborghini event which never happened? Well it seems like it will happen in this update. I don't expect it to happen anytime soon, but rather after the road trip is done, and there are three new Lamborghinis added which are potential lock-ins for the event. To start off the Lamborghini SVJ Roadster, a gold star car which means either purchasable through gold coins or pullable. This will be a lock-in which you can go for if you don't own the coupe version I presume. As for how good this car is, well it's pretty damn good. Dino wise it is faster than the max dino of the regular SVJ, but then on the runtime it beats the dino even more. Again here the cars share stage 6 parts, so if you have some in your inventory you'll be able to use it as well. Another lock-in requirement for the event will be any Centenario version we have in the game, and right now we have three roadsters. But we will finally get a coupe version of the Centenario in its iconic carbon and yellow color combination, and it's absolutely gorgeous. This will most likely be a paid car, as a plan B if you don't own any type of Centenario yet. This is also a pretty fast car, but is it faster than the roadsters? According to the dyno, yes, but not by much, and on runtime it's also slightly faster but again open to improvements. Once more stage 6 paths are interchangeable between the roadsters and this version, which is always dope. The final new Lamborghini car is the fastest of the three and probably the coolest, the CN Roadster. We already had the coupe version for quite some time now as it was a flash event at some point, and I expect this to be a paid alternative in case you don't own that coupe Cyan. I have to say that personally I prefer this blue Uranus compared to the Verde coupe, but of course that is my own taste. Not sure here if the stage 6 parts can also be split as I cannot find it in the inventory. The roadster on the dyno with the exact same tune is just a tad faster, being 11 thousandths of a second, so I expected the roadster to also be just that bit faster, but it drives different and I wasn't even able to go sub 7.1. The reward for all these cars if you finish the event will most likely be this Veneno Roadster, unless things were changed we are not aware of. The Veneno Roadster is still projected to run a 7.455 according to the dyno. The final new non-American road trip related car is a flash event, and it's a Ferrari, not just any, the SF90 Stradale. What a beauty this thing is, and it's here to take the title of the fastest Ferrari in the game. Like said, it will be a flash event, meaning it will be a paid car on full price on a solo event. But Ferrari parts are quite common, so upgradability wise, it's better than an SCG or a Javelin. Performance wise, I think this will be able to dip under 7 seconds, though I'm not so sure. Sadly, it's another car with a needle drop, making it 3 out of 8 so far. Now we got those covered, it's time for the American Road Trip Saga, and this I'll explain with the use of the rest of the upcoming cars. The next big event will start next week and that will be the LA Battle of the Builders event, which will consist of 5 lock-ins. The first one, same as any other event, any elite custom cars from the Made in America series, which you have not used yet. In the 2.15, the final two cars of the collection have also received their customization options, being the Viper GTS and the Cadillac CTS-V. So now you should technically be able to complete the collection and get your own RTR Mustang. However, one remark here, with the update came a bug, where if you install these rims, or these rims on the Mustang GT Premium, you will be locked out of the game. So do not install these rims or your garage cannot be loaded and you'll end up with a black screen. They are working on a fix for it and it should be out soon, so be careful. 
The second lock-in is left out for any Hennessy card from the Trinity Cup, so people should already have at least one of the three. And the third lock-in will be for the Ford Dirty 30, a card which will either be pullable on a drop rate or come for gold coins. And personally, I hope for the coins because the need for gold keys has been extremely high over the past month already. The fourth lock-in is where it gets interesting. The files have now been changed to where it actually says it's a 2005 Heritage Edition 4 GT that you will need to lock in. The one you can only get by winning the Phoenix Evo Cup. If you don't get your hands on that one, the paid option will be the SCG 003S and those are hard to get fusion parts for. And just like the Detroit event, the crates for this lock-in will most likely be paid crates. So be sure to grab some of those crates now for the 2005 Ford GT while they're purchasable for bronze keys, so you don't get forced to pay later. Spread that information with your crews please because this is crucial. The fifth lock-in is left out for the Dutch Boys Hot Trot Chevrolet Camaro, another custom built Camaro which you can win as a milestone on the upcoming LA Showdown which will run parallel to the LA Battle of the Builders. This car arrived in a 2.13 update already with broken performance and then vanished in 2.14 breaking the game. Now it's back and with the right performance and there are two versions. The red one which will be for the milestone players if you reach X amount of trophies and then the blue version which will be the leaderboard prize and that will be rewarded to the top X players. Just like the Twisted Mistresses they're both close in performance with the leaderboard prize being slightly faster hitting a dyno of a 7.340 and a milestone hitting a dyno of a 7.390. Both cars have a needle drop, so the counter is at 5 out of 10 right now. The pattern for both is identical, so I'll just show the milestone version. The reward for this event will be the Challenger Havoc, which is a monster of a machine. It has 2500 brake horsepower, which is no small number, but it's also extremely broken in the game once more, having a dyno of a 7.098, which sounds normal and I didn't really expect much from it, but it could well be the second fastest car in the game. Though I expect this car to get a nerf, because it shouldn't be there in the first place. I managed to run a 6.909, so I expect if it doesn't get changed that it can run a 6.8 even. And honestly, this car blew me out of the water. By the way, to my surprise, it doesn't have a needle drop, so the counter stays at 5 out of 11. The stop after LA will be the Duality Cup in San Jose for the Corvette C8 and the Shelby Super Snake, which is not a mandatory event to participate in as there is no car rewarded and both cars cannot be used in the finale either. But since both cars are elite custom cars, I expect loads of elite components to be rewarded here. But after this stop is where it will all go down on the San Francisco finale where you can get your hands on the fastest car in the game the NASCAR Camaro ZL1 1LE and I do not think this will be nerfed as after such a long series, the fastest car as a reward is to be expected. This will be like any other big event in the build up, a rundown of 5 lock-ins. With the first one, you guessed it, any made in America car you have not used in the previous event yet. The second lock-in might be more interesting as here you will have to use the showdown prizes, which means any Twisted Mistress or Dutch Boys Camaro. So depending on what you have, it should be accessible for free. The third lock-in is where it can get a bit more complicated. Here you will have to use the Valkyria, which could be one on the Detroit event, and is hands down one of my favorite cars in the game. But in case you missed out on it, you will get the option to buy this variant named Uncle Sam, and this has to be one of the coolest cars I have seen thus far. The comic style design on it, it's amazing. Even if I don't need it, I want it. Performance wise, I expected it to match the Valkyria we already have but to my disappointment, it's faster. I'm not a big fan of this as I wished paying doesn't automatically give you a faster car because many paid cash to complete the Detroit event not knowing this would be an option. Why not just copy paste its performance? Well, they did copy paste one thing and that is the dyno and the pattern. On a dyno, it's already almost a full tenth quicker and on the runs, it dips comfortably under seven seconds, but again with a needle drop, making it six out of 12 and there is a lot of room for improvement here.
The fourth lock-in is then another event reward, being the Challenger Havoc by Right Spike Cam. In case you did not win this one, it won't be purchasable, but I presume the event will rerun parallel to the finale to give you a second chance. The final lock-in then is the car from the final showdown in Los Derivas, and one of the cars I'm looking the most forward to to get my hands on. The first actual GT race car in the game, the Corvette C8R. As you can see there are again two models, one milestone and one leaderboard prize, and the grey version with the number 4 in second position is the milestone spec, while the number 3 with the first position being displayed in the LED panel is the leaderboard spec. Again with the leaderboard price being slightly faster, having a dyno of a 6.984, it is 0.06 faster than the milestone spec, of which I'll show a run, and to be honest, it's not easy to match the dyno. Both cars have needle drops, so that makes the total at 8 out of 14 now. And the reward for the big finale then, the Moment Supreme, is the fastest car of the game by a landslide. The NASCAR Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 1LE. A beautiful machine, but it slightly beats fantasy where a NASCAR beats a straight up drag built car like the Cobra Jet. But hey, they are running a 6.8 and a half a mile, isn't that crazy enough? I won't keep y'all waiting, on a dyno it sits at a 6.959, but it can run well below that, and yes, it has a needle drop, making it 9 out of 15 cars. So that is all of them for today, a lot to take in and a lot to remember of course, but a lot to look forward to as well. The only thing which I am disappointed in is that 60% of the new cars have a needle drop. This is not abnormal, this is absurd. This should not be the case and there is definitely something wrong with their systems and it needs to be fixed because it just kills running the car, it's not fun. Anyways, if I can reach these times, expect these times to be beaten by others, so they can definitely be faster, but they are initial benchmarks. The goal was to show you guys what they're capable of and if they're worth going for. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe for more content like this. Thank you all for watching, my name is Miller, see you around and keep racing.